Hi friends, it's another Jeep video. This is Jeep number 16. So today we're gonna to be working on getting the engine out and there's a few more things that need to happen. So today we're gonna to go underneath the engine and we're gonna get the torque converter loose. Um, and I think that's the last thing I need to do before I hook chains up to here at which point I can lift the engine out and then I can take it to get the wrinkle ironed out of the frame. So stay tuned. Remember to like my videos if you enjoy this. Check out the playlist which has all the Jeep videos. And remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on alerts so you find out when I post a new video. Okay, before I get started, I want to talk about tools. So I'm using a half inch, three quarter inch socket that'll be used to rotate the flywheel. I'm using a paint marker and a 99 cent bottle of white nail polish. I'm gonna use that to mark the flywheel and the torque converter relationship. I have an 18 millimeter wrench, which is what I expect the torque converter bolts to be. And I'm gonna take the spark plugs loose so that I don't have any resistance when I turn the engine over. Um, that's just gonna make my life a little bit easier. So we're gonna start there. We're going to take the uh, spark plugs loose. I'm not gonna take them out. I'm just gonna break them so that they don't compress. And um, so let's get started with that. I'm gonna put the camera up where it can see everything. Uh, actually, you know what, I take that back. I'm gonna put it over here on the hood and then you guys can see what I'm working on. So I believe these are 13 sixteenths. Um, no, they can't possibly be that. They're, maybe they're 11 sixteenths. Let's start with figuring out what these are. All right, they're 11 sixteenths. Now, you, you know, if you talk to different people, you'll get different answers. I do not like to use power tools on my spark plugs because I have stripped a spark plug before and it's, uh, that's not it. There shouldn't be any play like that. So they're smaller than 11 sixteenths. Maybe they are five eighths. Yeah, maybe they are. All right, so anyway, you don't want to strip a spark plug. That is bad news. And I don't want them out while I'm pulling the engine because stuff could drop in there and then that's also bad news because it could damage the cylinders. Oh shit, I just had one break in half on me. <clears throat> so clearly this one will have to come out, but not today. I'm not worried about running the engine, so I'm not gonna follow that rabbit hole. I'm just gonna keep breaking these things loose. a snake to get back in here and work on this. I don't know how the hell the dealers do it. And keep in mind, I have the grill out of this thing, so I have comparatively easy access right now. All right. It's a pretty safe assumption that spark plug's bad. So I'm gonna throw that away. All right, so we're gonna be working in here this evening. And I've got my DeWalt portable work lights, which are gonna really brighten things up. If you are, have not seen these, you can check out my video review of them. I've been really, really happy with them because they're perfect for things like this. So let me see where I'm gonna mount the camera. 
Now, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you're probably thinking, hey, your audio quality really improved, and it did. So, let's see. So the cylinders are gonna move on me. But I think I can get an impact wrench in here. So I'm gonna rig for that and I'll be right back. All right, so I think it's accessible in that spot and there's four of these. So I'm gonna move the camera back a little bit because it's gonna be right where I need to work. Go. That should give you guys a good view. Hopefully the uh, sound quality is a lot better today. I'm using a Rode wireless mic. Uh, as I said on my last video, it's not the best microphone, but I think it'll work for my purposes. And yes, this will work. So that needs to be a little bit higher up if this is going to do what I think I can do. Now these are weird little bolts. So, <clears throat> they're a half inch long. They're really weird little bolts. Suggest they're M. It's got 10.9 stamped in the end of it. So let me get my nail polish because uh, this is going to be the one that gets marked. Okay, so I don't think the location of the bolts is important, but I'm going to put them back in the exact location. So I've labeled that bolt one with my paint pen and I've labeled the spot one. And now I'm going to get out some LA Colors 99 cent nail polish. And we're just going to mark this hole. Now some people have done, I saw one guy who used spray paint and he painted all the holes different colors. And that's fine. We just got to index it. We just need to know which hole that bolt came out of. And a little bit of nail polish will do it. And I don't expect to be done with this by the time um, while that's still wet. Like, I think it's going to dry in place. It'll be just fine. So I need to rotate the engine 25 degrees. So let me go do that. I'm going to put a bark on the flywheel so I know where 25 degrees is. I'm not going to show you guys that. I'll show it to you later. Okay, so... That was pretty straightforward. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're recording here. So I think that's in the right spot. So let's go ahead and get this off. Yeah. And I'm using a wobble extension. That just makes it a little easier for me. All right, so we got one out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark this one with two. So you can use two dots or just like what I did, the number two. And then I'm setting it nose down. And then just write a number two on there. So I gotta index this, I'll be right back. I'm gonna let you guys watch the indexing from down there. <clears throat> now I have a mark up here, so I have a really good idea where I'm at. That should be it right there. And it is. 
it needs to be a little bit further so oops always one this one's being uh, rather difficult so I'm gonna back the bolt up a little bit because I think my clearance is just not quite right I think I actually turned it a little further so I think it needs to be right up there at the very beginning of where it's visible because that puts it out to the side of the oil pan if the oil pan was off this would be easier but we're not going there today That is a hard one. So, I'm gonna get a breaker bar, and now I gotta figure out how to lock the engine. So I'll be right back. So what makes sense to me is to pull this down to the other side where I can get to it and use a breaker bar on one side and a wrench on the other. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. We're gonna have to back up. Might be our magic safe. So I started to lock it with the crankshaft, but I really don't want to do that, so I'm not going to. So I need this a little bit further to where I can get to it. I'm really surprised the impact gun didn't do it. They normally do. All right. 
So I've got a six point socket. I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees and see if that improves the angles. does not. You know, let's just move on to number four. That should be it right there. Okay, so that's number four. Now we can go back to fighting with the remaining bolt. So I'm gonna bring out the big gun, I'll be right back. So it's interesting because this electric, the electric impact wrench has been really good. I haven't had to use my air one at all on this project, but I suspect this will make short work out of it. Did we get the bolt? Yes, we got it. Looky there. So that's the difference between a DeWalt electric impact wrench and a pneumatic one. I'm impressed. The pneumatic one made extremely short work out of that. So let's mark that as number three. And then uh, I gotta stop and regroup here 
before we go to the next step. I will show you guys what I did up here. And basically I painted a mark on the engine on the, the harmonic balancer with the paint pen or the nail polish so that I could tell where I was. And I just rotated 25 degrees. Uh, this harmonic balancer is okay. I don't like seeing cracks in the rubber like this. This tells me the rubber is shot. So I might replace this when I have the engine out. I'm definitely pulling the oil pan. I'm planning on replacing the oil pump. And I've got some grooves in my pulleys. So I'm probably going to replace these pulleys because I don't, I don't know what caused those grooves. But I can't imagine that's going to help the lifespan of my belts. So I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to put away tools and I'll be back. And we'll start on the next part of this project. So one of the things I bought a while back was this thing called a thread checker. And it is a necklace of a whole bunch of nut and bolt or screw and socket sizes. And it's particularly good because I can go in here and like this is rumored to be 7 16 14. So I can actually check that. I don't think it is. Well, maybe it is. All right. So now I know what I'm looking for in terms of bolt sizes. It is indeed a 716-14. I want to make it sure it's not an M12. Boy, that'd be a really strange pitch, but... Nope, it's not. So it's 716 by, it's a 716 by 14 nut. So let me go see if I have any of those. Hey friends, so man, what a pain in the butt it was to find these 716 by 14 pitch nuts to go on here. I looked on Advanced Auto's website and they said they have them. They said they sell them for 49 cents a piece. I thought, man, that's a great price. I'll just go in there and get two or three of them. Not a big deal. Wrong. When I went to the store, it's about a, maybe it's within a mile of my house. The, I, I walked up the counter and the lady says, what can I help you with? I said, I need a couple of um, washers and, and nuts. Uh, I'm looking for 7 16 by 14 pitch. And your website says you sell them individually. Do you have a part number for that? Couldn't believe she asked for a part number. Yeah, it's 7 16 nut, dumbass. So she looks at me and she leads me to the aisle where they sell nuts and bolts and she points to it and says, well, I think it's in here somewhere and then walks off. You know, it wouldn't be so bad except that the sign on the door says, we excel at excellent customer service, which clearly they don't. They hire idiots who have never worked on a car in their life and who don't know anything about parts and all they are is order takers that type in what you want and go pull it off a shelf. Well, you know, I walked out of the store and she said, well, did you find it? And I told her, I said, no, I didn't, but I'm gonna go to Home Depot because I can find it there and if all I'm gonna do is get crap service, I might as well get a better price for it. Why pay $5 for a couple bolts if I can get it for home, at Home Depot for a dollar or something? So anyway, that's where I went. So, and on that note, uh, where did it go? Let me go grab the, uh, yeah, the balancer. Sorry for the background noise. This is really, as far as I'm concerned, this is the only way to pull an engine is you need one of these. And we're gonna try and set this one up. What I don't know is how much chain I need. But I guess we're gonna figure that part out pretty quickly. So I'm gonna start with a lot of chain. Yeah, so I'm gonna use the number two stud because that keeps me well away from this. And I'm gonna use the second link. So I went to Home Depot and the they didn't have 716s washer, but they have half inch. That, that's good enough for what we're doing. And they were, at, you know, it was $1.28 or something for a two-pack. I'm going to put two of those in there because they are cheap Chinese hardware. Anything that's sold by, you know, what do they call this, Everbuilt. 
yeah, have her shit is what it really should say. So anyway, we're just going to put one of these in here with a couple washers under it. And I don't like these to be loose. So I'm going to just step up in here, walk into the engine area. And what I want to see is... Yeah, that'll work. Except that I've got this backwards. So you really want that out here. So let's let's turn that around. You know. If I'd have told you I was gonna drop that and bounce off the valve cover and send the washers flying, I couldn't have done it. Um, but fortunately, these come several to a package, so I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna sit here and mess with it. I'm just gonna move straight on and put two more in there and twist this one down and call it a day. Um, you really want to do a balancer. Um, these are, I don't know what these cost these days. It was kind of expensive um, at the time I bought it. Um, I don't, you know what, I'm just going to climb right the hell in here. And stand in the, I've got one foot in the battery tray. And then I'm going to use this second to the last bolt and what I'm trying to do is get this in here and not cause any damage so where the hell those washers went but fortunately there were six in the bag so that's two for each engine mount and two for the floor and, you know it really doesn't matter because this is only a few dollars um, and I don't plan to use these again. So let me um, let me get a ratchet because I want I want to. Well, let me see what this looks like when I try. I think this still needs to come in a little bit. See, what really bothers me is this wants to slam back against these wiring connections. Go ahead and bring the uh, engine stand in here. All right, not engine stand, engine hoist. Jesus Christ. Come on. So I've resisted having this in here because it really does take up a lot of space. And it's been outside, so I won't be surprised to see stuff crawl out of it. Now, I put this together quite some time ago. And I did reviews on it when I did it, so... 
I've been overall pretty happy with it. Um, the rust is my fault because it lives outside. That's a little trick you probably didn't know you could do. <sighs> so we really only need a quarter ton, but I don't trust this, so I'm gonna leave it at a ton, which is a thousand pounds. And I think that gives me enough reach to do what I need to do. I'm going to temporarily set the pin there because I want to get a feel for the right pick distance. Uh, no, it's going to need more pick distance, so I'm going to have to go out to the quarter ton. Um, let's see. So... Yeah, I don't I don't see any way around this. This is a heavy engine and I would really prefer not to lift it at max pick, but I don't see an option. So I'm just gonna hang this and pick it up to see kind of what my um my angles and stuff look like. I think it'll be okay, but you know, one of the things that bothers me about this setup is I can't get the picker in any further. And um, you know, I'm gonna lose clearance when the frame is straightened, which means it's gonna be really difficult to get this in. Um, Yeah, I, I would really, well, so we can let some, I, I can adjust this a little bit. I didn't even see that. So one of the problems with this handle is it's just not well made. So I feel like that's too much engine behind the pick, um, but it may not it may not be a huge deal at this point. I just you know, and again, I want to just kind of lift it and see what I'm dealing with here. It'll probably cause it to pop straight out and forward, which is what we want. Um, so the bolts holding the motor to the transmission on the top are E14 uh, external torques. Um, I had to order the set. I ordered them on Amazon. I'll talk about it when I get them. And it really looks like I need 
a 36 inch extension to reach over the transmission from behind it back by the muffler and that looks like the most sane way to get up there and deal with it i i can see them from back there i've got a straight shot i took a tape measure down there and i see oh it's 36 inches so i ordered that on amazon so i'm looking at a couple day delay no matter what I really wanted to have the engine kind of hanging, get the bolts loose, and then deal with the motor mounts because I know I've got one motor mount that I have no idea what the hell is holding it up. Two of the three bolts are completely broken or sheared off from the accident, and I frankly think the motor is just jammed up against the uh, frame. So I didn't want... I, I want the engine hanging and supported before I'm under there undoing whatever is left of holding it up. And I really wanted... Um, you know, I kind of wanted to do this a little differently, so that's that's why I'm I'm bringing the the cherry picker in a little bit early because I, I don't know what's holding up the driver's side of the motor. The the engine mount's trashed, and I think I've got a broken exhaust manifold. Although I think all I've got is a broken ear on it, so we're gonna see if it really needs to be replaced or if that's just an upgrade. Um, where I'm at right now is I think this is about a ten thousand dollar project, so. Uh, I haven't talked numbers much in this whole series. I paid $4,400 for this Jeep. I think that's a great price for it. Uh, Copart's auction fees were about $1,600, and that included putting it in my driveway. So the tow from the salvage yard here was like 100 bucks, and that's, you know, could I have gone and gotten it? Yes, but it's a whole lot cheaper for me to have just let them do it, and then I don't have to deal with trying to back it up in my driveway. Um the um you know so that that gives me a landed cost of about six grand and i see about four grand worth of repairs um that includes both airbags the radiator the framework i've got a quote on the framework for about 600 bucks i i expect that to go a little bit higher but not a whole lot higher um i'm gonna replace the fenders anyway so i'm not I'm not counting the cost of the bodywork, but the oh, the aftermarket fender is kind of expensive. So, so anyway, I, all in, I'm I'm aiming to be ten grand, and I'm trying to differentiate from things that are their toy and fun upgrades versus restore the Jeep to the point where I can title it and register it. In Texas, if you buy a salvage vehicle until the repairs are complete and you have an inspection certificate, you can't title the vehicle. So this still belongs to the, I mean, like the insurance company sold it to me. I got the, the orange title sitting in my, on my desk. It's mine. I'm not worried about that. But I mean, again, that's just a little bit, uh, maybe I should do one of these videos on how salvage titles work. And um, the insurance company said that the estimated retail value on this vehicle was 18 grand pre-accident. And I thought they were smoking crack. But that's not really the case. They actually probably were spot on. When I started checking what these Jeeps go for with the lift kit and the cool tires on them, uh, they're probably right. It probably is an $18,000 vehicle. That's insane. Um, but, um, and normally a salvage brand on title is good for about 30% reduction in value. So I'm still coming out right side up on this vehicle in my mind in, in terms of you know, if if I buy, you know, doing the work, and, but but then once I'm done, I'm still going to do some stuff to it. Now, um, at any rate, that's that's just kind of where we're at right now. Um, I got to stop and think, what do I want to do next uh, in terms of pulling the engine? Because I've got a couple day delay waiting on tools so that I can get at those bolts and not spend several hours like I did on the stupid exhaust downpipe that was designed by Houdini. Um, so I've got a little time to kill. I'm going to try and get this fan off here. Uh, not, I don't really expect this to go smoothly, but it should be good for entertainment purposes. Um, you guys might get a good laugh out of it. So I'm going to set this up like this. Um, I'm not, I don't really feel like buying a box wrench just for this. Um, yep, that's not going to fit. Something tells me this one won't either. Nope.
This one might. This is a husky. Oh, it will fit. All right, so there's that, and then Then we just got to figure out how to get this off. And really what we need to do is we need to jam it, but I don't see that happening real well either. Although the air conditioning compressor looks like it's willing to lend a hand. So I think this needs to come towards me on this side. I think this is a reverse thread. That would make sense. And I've got to do something a little bit crazy here. And um, So, got that. So, again, what I'm trying to do at this point is just create a pinch point where I can jam this wrench. All right, so that's gonna be my pinch point. And then I'm gonna use this. What I'm gonna do is jam this here. And that's gonna hold the wrench. Um, and hopefully this will work. Probably won't. And then, because I don't think I can put enough force on that by hand, we're going to add some encouragement. I'm going to go look this up. Nothing like turning it the wrong way. So, no big deal. We will set up for the other direction. See, the Jeep wants to help. It threw the tool on the floor for me. Now there are other ways to do this. There is a fancy tool to go down in here and yada, yada, yada. And who knows, maybe I'll end up buying it, but. For now, I'm doing it my way. There we go. So. We did break it loose. Let me show you what I'm doing. I'm using this as a pry. I put the wrench here. And essentially the wrench jams against this sh central shaft. Okay. So just pretend that's on there. And then the wrench against the shaft locks the, the pulley from turning. And that allows this to um, be broken free. So we'll throw this stuff out the way. 
and get this contraption out of the way. There you go. And I think this is bad. It has a little play and they're not very expensive. And then the fan blade's bent. So I don't, I don't know if this should be bent back or if it should just be tossed. Cause these are, they spin pretty fast. Um, I'm gonna add it to the parts, parts bench. But there you have it. Uh, not too big of a deal. Um, I wanna take a measurement real quick because there is a chance I still don't like the way this picker's in here, and I want to know tire to tire. What's my clearance? Oh, looks like I'm 78 inches. Wow, that's more than I thought. So that's 15. So let's put that back on 15. 72 inches. I'll be right back. I'm going to go measure something in the yard. So uh, I wanted to see if the shop crane, the gantry crane that I built had the clearance and it doesn't. It only got about 60 inches between the, the uh, jacks and I need 72 um, to get across the Jeep. So that's not going to do that. We're going to have to use the cherry picker. And you know, honestly, the only thing that's wrong with this, well, I guess there's an extension issue, but Really, it's the boom on the top that's the, the weak part. Um, the cylinder can surely do it. So we're at 500. We're going to overload it by 80 or 90 pounds probably. Um, I think it'll be okay, but I really don't like doing that. I, I would much rather operate within the capacity of the unit, but it just doesn't have the reach. I don't know what they thought they... I don't know. What kind of engine can you pick that you, you know... Yeah, you, you just got to reach out and grab these things. So um, anyway, the next dilemma while I'm killing time is do I jack with taking the air conditioning compressor hoses completely off? I wasn't going to, but they really seem to be in my way. And um, one of the bonuses to pulling these off is it gives me, it gives me access to that front bolt and then I can um, move my chain forward a little bit. Um, and, and again, it's not, the issue isn't removing the engine, it's putting the engine back that this is going to be a problem. And man, you know, there's times where I really, really wish I had my forklift still. Not that I have space for it here, Lord knows that's the truth, but that forklift would make extremely short work out of pulling this engine. Hell, it made short work out of the whole thing. I, um, you know, it wasn't big enough to pick the whole Jeep up. But, um, yeah, I, I don't like the looks of this, but I think it'll work. Um, it's just going to be, it's going to be a fight to get it back in. I, I can tell you that now. And so then I sit there and I look at it and go, well, gosh, should I just pull the transmission and engine together and say the hell with it? But that, that'd be a nightmare. I mean, then I get about now what? I don't have the space to maneuver them, and um, that, I mean, that would be simple enough, but I don't need to do anything to the transmission. And I am gonna change the oil pan gasket and the rear main seal and the front main seal and the valve cover gasket while I've got it. I'm gonna do like a soft rebuild with an emphasis on not leaking oil. And then I've got some stuff here on the front that needs attention. Um, you know, my front main looks okay. I, I may pull the timing chain cover and look at that because, you know, we've got 100 and I think it's 111,000 miles on it. And I feel like at 111,000 miles, we're in the territory where the timing chain um, could benefit from a refresh. You know, um, I want to do a proper compression test on this engine so that I can determine definitively if I need to rebuild it while it's out or not. Um, you know, I, what I don't want to do is put it back in and six months later have to pull it back out. So anyway, uh, let's see, I need to re I need to disconnect the, the crankshaft position sensor and, uh, 
you know, there's, there's not really a nice way to get to it. Um, I can kind of see it, but it's just slightly beyond arm's reach. Um, yeah, I don't know where the hell I'm leaking oil from on this engine, but it's all over the damn place. All over the place. Um, I was really trying not to break the engine down any more than I absolutely had to to do this. I've got to get the uh, transmission cooler lines off the side of the engine. I guess that would be a good project this afternoon. That's a nice greasy mess underneath there. I've got I've got this kind of supporting thing, so I feel I feel good about working underneath the engine. Um, so let me let me start doing that. I'm gonna wash my hands and put gloves on though, because I really don't want any more shit on my hands than I have to have. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've set my lights up so I have plenty of light to work with under there. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna work on getting under there so I can figure out what's holding that clip in. All right, so. Definitely, uh, let me reposition this light, but I can see a clip here. So we'll tr crawl under here and see if we can figure out how it works. Now, if you're wondering what these lights are, these are my DeWalt portable 20 volt lights. I uh, can't really figure out what's holding this thing in. No bolt on top. <clears throat> what the hell it's held to? Oh, friction fit. How convenient. All right, well. Oh, and it's going to be in the way. There's no, no two ways around it. So I'm going to have to take these lines off the sides of the transmission. Well, how convenient for you guys that the camera is already in the spot it needs to be in. Oh yeah, that engine mount is completely sheared off there, and I still don't know what's holding this engine up. Maybe the air conditioning compressor? No, no. It looks like it's the exhaust manifold. Wow, I feel great underneath here. So, um, before we mess with the transmission cooler lines, uh, let me show you what I'm looking at here. So you can see that the engine mount is completely sheared off. Uh, it broke one of the bosses, two of the bosses, and sheared a bolt. So we'll probably recover the bolt, uh, but we're definitely going to have to go with a pair of brown dog mounts. And if the brown dog mounts don't do it, then we're looking at a new engine. That's a lot of fun. Not. All right. Okay, so these are just like the ones in the front. A royal pain in the ass to work with. <sighs> So the first thing we need to do is get these dust covers off and any screwdriver should do this except the one I'm holding. There we go. You just insert that and twist and then 
Same thing up here. We're just going to insert and twist. These are just dust covers. Um, it's going to leak some oil when I do this. Uh, you know, but I don't really see a way around it. Um, I figure out how I can not get leaked on. Hmm. Let me get my uh, catch pan and I will return momentarily with something to catch this in. And then I'll see if I can figure out how to do this without getting oil in my face and on my clothes. Uh, where is this going to go? Let's pretend these are loose. It's just going to go straight forward. That's where it's going to go. All right. Let me make sure these work the way I think they do. There's little clips there. So, yeah, I gotta figure out how to work these little clips. No big deal. Yeah, there they are. I really wish I had the right tools to slide in there and pop these pins loose, but the ones I bought weren't right, and I'm not spending the money that they want. So, anyway, I'm even chitter chatting, it's not getting these off. start with the harder of the two which is the one that's at the top see this so um, when you push these pins in like this it causes the clip to pop out so what we need to do is figure out where the top of the clip is and where the bottom of the clip is and I actually think it's up here these were really easy to deal with on the front not so easy to deal with back here mainly because of the angle all right so I'm gonna reposition the camera okay so I think that gives you guys good access and then that lets me sit here and kind of pick at these and figure out where this goes. you know what I think I can do this with two screwdrivers well, I don't want to do it that way. I really want to pull the clip off. All right, what am I looking at here? don't want to do it this way, but it might have to happen this way. 
No, that ain't gonna do it. But let me get another little screwdriver. question is where the hell the little plastic clips that I bought that are designed for this, where they went. And you know, the best up part is I own a couple sets of these. I own the Lyle ones when they were not $4.99, they were like $29.99. So that's a screwdriver that's a candidate here. But I really want to find the little plastic ones that I bought from Harbor Freight. Because they will do this. They're the right size, they're the right shape. And I have no flipping idea where I set them. I know I didn't do, I didn't take them back. Because Harbor Freight is a thorough pain in the ass to return anything to. Man, I don't know where they went. I can even see them in my mind, this little shrink rack package.
Okay, we're gonna try the Harbor Freight ones that we used earlier. We're gonna try them again. Um, I'm really looking for the little plastic ones because they're thinner and I know they'll fit, but I don't have a clue where they are at, which is extraordinarily frustrating. So let's see if this works. I mean, I don't see it. Nope. I don't see it fitting in here any way, shape, form. These are just not right for transmission lines. So my other alternative is pair of these. So now that we've got a little bit of it exposed, we can get it with the other screwdriver and it should pop right out. Now the trick is to catch this so it doesn't fly off. All right. So that's one. And because we like to live dangerously, we're gonna do the second one. And I'll just turn the camera a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna use the big screwdriver to uh, pop the clip. Uh, maybe not. So I use a little screwdriver to get the clip loose. And then I'm gonna come in here with the big screwdriver and pop the clip loose. And then I can just grab it and remove it by hand and take this clip off. And that's kind of what we wanna do. We don't, we don't want them to fly off. We don't wanna break the clips. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoot out from underneath this because I fully expect Well, that wasn't as bad as I thought. That's what I expected to happen. So we're gonna let that drain down and it'll eventually stop. So I'm gonna grab a rag while I'm waiting for that. Let me see if I could just slide this forward. So this is kind of what I was 
want and do. So I'm gonna drain these down. Yeah, these lines are full of uh, fluid. I don't really have a nice solution to this either. There, that's the nice solution. Let it sit in there. And now what I'm gonna do is go pull it from the other side and try to mop up the mess that I've made. Okay, so I'm um, put a fresh set of gloves on. And actually, you know, I was gonna pull it out this side, but I really think it should go out the back. I think it just needs to be lowered out and I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do with it because it's got all this oil in it, but I think I'm gonna take it out from the driver's side. <laughs> Yep, that's definitely the right move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and turn this vertically out here. Um, I guess I can move the camera so you guys can see. Let me, let me change gloves. <clears throat> so I don't want, I don't want this draining all over my work area. I don't, I sure don't want it on my welders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain it into this pan before I set it over there on my piece of plywood that is my part staging area. So what we'll do at this point is just turn this up and push it over here in the corner and let all the fluid drain out. Now suddenly there's not a whole lot of fluid in here, which is ironic because there was a lot of fluid in there a few minutes ago, but whatever. So if it's in there, it's gonna come out. And um, I guess next we might as well deal with the, uh, the camshaft or crankshaft position sensor. So I can see it down here, but I don't think I can get... I see the connector. I see the lock for the connector. Man, I don't know if I can get in there. I guess I'll try. I'll find you guys a place to watch from. Put some gloves on. Uh, I need my little screwdriver, so let me grab that. <clears throat> All right. So, 
set that there. And I know I could probably edit this, but you know, I shoot my videos from the perspective that we're buddies and you're hanging out in my garage while I work on this and you're kind of watching. So it's not, I don't, I do not try to produce polished videos that are fit for National Geographic or Discovery Channel or whatever. Most of those companies are full of shit anyway and they stage all their crap. So, yeah, I don't think that's gonna work either. I think this would be easier to get to from the bottom. Okay. There it is. It's right here. This is definitely easier to access. Now the question is where to put the camera. So that's there. I think you guys are gonna go back on the lower control arm. And I think that's probably a good angle right there. So we'll do that. Oh, that is not the crankshaft. What the hell is that? Oh, that's an oil pressure center. I bet. So I've got a crankshaft position sensor here. There we go. That's not so bad. So that's unlocked. I don't know why that had to be unlocked because it's not going anywhere. see what I'm fighting with. You know, but for a couple inches of clearance in here, this would be easy to work on. All right. So that's clearly intended to be worked on from the top, but we might be able to get it from down here. There we go. So that looks like it was the last thing to come out of there. I've got the crankshaft position sensor loose. Now let's see if we can put fingers on the There's a bolt up here and you guys aren't going to be able to see it, but there's a bolt up here that trans so this is the lower bolt and then there's an upper bolt that I can't see from this angle. Well, you know what? I was able to see that, so that's that's fine. I can see it from behind the transmission. Let's see what this looks like over here. There it is, it's on the tube. Boy, that's a really shitty location for a breather tube. It really ought to be higher. All right, so really all we got going on at this point, the driver's side engine mount is sheared, so it's gonna present no resistance. The passenger side is still secured, so I guess we can look at this and see what we're in for down here. I got one bolt, two bolts. One, two, I only see two bolts. There should be a third one, there it is, it's up in there. So what I'm anticipating, I guess I'll just turn the camera so you guys can see, is one bolt, two bolt, three bolts. So what I'm anticipating is I'm gonna put a little bit of leverage on this and then undo those bolts. And um, I could undo, I don't think I can get to the other side of it. So there's a bolt here and a bolt there on the top, but I can't reach the top bolt. Um, 
and that's welded in. So, yeah. Oh, I am so impressed that this engine is still sitting in here and it's not laying sideways in this frame. I'm more impressed that the exhaust manifold didn't shatter. I really feel like I should replace the exhaust manifold, but if there's nothing wrong with it, that makes it an upgrade, not a repair. I'm so impressed that it didn't shatter. Mainly because it's cast iron and partly because these are absolutely notorious um, for, you know, fracturing. So it's really impressive that it didn't. So at this point, we're really ready for liftoff. We just don't have any E14 torques and I don't have a 36 inch extension, but those are on the way. And um, I guess that's it for now because I really don't have anything else I can do until I get um, those tools. And I'm not gonna play highway robbery prices to go buy them right this second. Um, so yeah, that's it.